In this video, I just want to have a uh, look at some of the challenges and solutions for using uh, WooCommerce when it comes to Brizzy. So I'm mainly concerned here with the archive view or the shop view. And this is su just some of the things that I've tried. So what I've done is I've created my layout on my shop page. And I, laid, la I inserted the archive element at the top. I then inserted the product element, and then I pulled through the default layout for WooCommerce. And I wanted to have a look and see, you know, what the difference is between them. So in the first one, uh, we have the read more button. The second one, we have the product information with the view or buy, but no option to buy. And then with the WooCommerce integration, we have the add to cart. So Basically, I just wanted to see how these would work together or interact. So what I did then is I installed a plugin which then filters uh, the post. It's not an Ajax. You don't have to create your own layout. It actually works with the default um, integration with WooCommerce. So there's no templating required other than using the templates that you've made. So to show you how this works, I'm going to click here on decor just because it um, only has one product in it. And you'll see that under archive decor is listed. Um, the products, there's absolutely no effect on the products content element. And then the WooCommerce element also works. So just to show you the um, layout on the page, here I have my page in Brizzy. Um, what I've done here on the left hand side is I've installed that plugin for the um, archive and filtering. Then at the top here, I have a mini accordion with a mini cart in. So we have this mini cart in the accordion. And then on the right hand side here, I have the archive element. So in the archive element, archive filter um, navigation. So that's the archive. Here I have the product element. And you'll see here products filter navigation. So the product element. And then at the bottom, I have a short code that then pulls in the default uh, WooCommerce layout. And when doing my tests on the site, this looked really promising. The archive worked. The fact that the product didn't work um, obviously doesn't work with the default loop within WooCommerce. And then, of course, the default WordPress uh, uh, WooCommerce integration works as normal, right? So the initial um, integration with the WordPress pennant looked good because it then even on attributes, I was able to sort and it was the same as the WordPress WooCommerce results. So I thought, you know, that was maybe a way to go. However, um, when we look at the um, integration here, you'll see that I can't add any product information here. Well, I wasn't able to add any product information. So if I have this text and I decide I want to bring in, you know, maybe the product price, I first tried to add an element scroll down and this is Brizzy Pro. Um, there's nothing here to allow me to pull in any WooCommerce elements, even though I'm in the archive page, in the archive section, and I'm trying to set up an archive. So I couldn't work that out. When I selected an element of text, I couldn't find anything here that would allow me to um, generate or bring in any custom data. So we can set the alignment. Um, here we've got these styles and effects, so that's great, but still no use. And then over here was the duplicate. So I couldn't find a way to bring in um, any content. And of course, there's no ways to add any custom code. So I couldn't find an element in here that allowed me to add custom code to the page. So what I did in the end then is um, went with the archive, the product um, didn't work at all. And also it only says view or buy. So there's no like buy now. Um, as you would have here, like select options or buy now. Then, um, so the initial um, results here with the archive kind of looked okay, um, but I still couldn't change the layout. Um, so then what I did is I had a look at um, some of the other filter options. And when I went over to filter by price, um, that was where the issue arose with the archive. You can't uh, do anything with price on the archive. Of course, the product didn't respond at all, and the default WooCommerce setup worked as normal. So um, 
I kind of came to the conclusion then that if we're going to use WooCommerce with Brizzy and we're going to try and hook into the default WooCommerce functionality, then you need to pull in the default WooCommerce um, layout. And what you also need to do then um, uh, is then have a look at using WooCommerce hooks for the styling. So pretty much realized that I couldn't use any of these. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove the uh, the archive section because it doesn't work, not for uh, what I want to do. And I'm also going to remove this shop area, this product area, because it doesn't integrate with um, what, I, what I need to do here. And then I'm going to remove the text element. And I'm just going to be left with the default WooCommerce integration, which is now um, what we're going to have on the page. So let's just write. So there we have the shop and we have the default elements. Um, to illustrate now, if we say add to cart, you'll see that the add to cart um, is functioning. And here we have a mini cart and you'll see that the item has been added. If I add another item, you'll see that that item has been added. And then of course, you know, we can deselect. So this is pretty much then um, where you know I came to realize then that that's perhaps the way to go. So um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I decided to do. And then if we view cart, you'll see that the element has been added to the cart. Remove the item, and then we're back to the shop. Now the other the other way that I like to work um, is uh, I also like to use hooks then. Um, in a situation like this then, to do the styling and to add added functionality to, to show you how that works. I use um, code snippets and I'm just going to activate those. And upon activation now you'll see that the shop takes on a, a slightly different look and a couple of other features then become apparent. So. Um, with the introduction of the hooks, we start to create a more shop-like page. So here, we, for example, um, we have the Add to Cart buttons. Then we have a stock indication. So if an item is just a normal item in stock, it'll just say like 10 available or in stock. If the item is on sale and um, we're managing stock, it'll say the last six. So these, we're not managing stock. They're always in stock. So it says in stock. But for this particular item, we then indicate it's the last six. And um, yeah, that's pretty much um, how we go. On a group product, we've got um, Buy Me uh, Grouped. So that's for all the grouped items. It'll just say that it's a grouped item. So go in and have a look. Um, then over here where we have um, an item that has variations, it says Buy Me. So not Add to Cart. So um, you need to go and look at that product to make your selection. And then here for an external product, it says buy external product. So that's just to give you an idea of the, you know, the kind of things that you can do. Also by using um, a series of hooks, um, also able to do a couple other things. So we've got our Ajax add to cart. And what I've also done now is introduced this mini indicator so it's not a mini cart but it just says fifteen dollars and you have one item in the cart it doesn't link you to the cart and it's really just an indication while working on the site that the um, add to cart and ajax are working and then here under this accordion i've just put in a, a mini cart and in here you can see that the ajax is working and we have the total coming through so this was really just for testing purposes. Um, you can get a lot more creative with the mini cart. And you'll also see that um, as I use this and as I remove the item here, it's also removed from there. So this is kind of the um, point that I got to where I realized that this is probably going to be, for me, the best way to work with WooCommerce and Brizzy. Uh, of course, the various filters work as they should. So there we have the decor. And if we clear that, we go back to the main view. Um, I can scroll down here to size. 
the size comes through and because this plugin is dynamic you'll see that only the options available to me are are live so um the other thing that you'll notice with this particular plugin then is that if I go into a category, so if I go into clothing, you'll see that I can filter by category, size, and color, and there are several subcategories within the clothing. And if I head then over to something like decor, for example, um, there's very little there that I need to, to filter, so it just comes up with the category name and the search facility. So I'm going to head back to the shop. And if we look at the search facility, um, if I just type in um, bean eye, then the beanies will come up. Uh, let's close that. If we type for something that's not in the shop, so let's do um, jacket, um, then nothing appears in the search results. Right, so that's pretty much then how it works. So uh, the pagination works the filters work and the layout works. So for me, um, this turned out to be the best solution. And in this case, I'm just using the WooCommerce 20, I think it's the 2021 theme um, as the default theme. Now, um, to show you how all of this fits together then, is I have a series of snippets here. And in these snippets then, I uh, create the um, functionality that I want. So we have the WooCommerce loop, which pulls in the default loop. Then we have the um, archive add quantity. We have a WooCommerce title, the sale percentage, um, a WooCommerce styling. Then we have the stock listing, some buttons, um, the update cart total, and then the mini cart. And these are standard hooks then that can be applied uh, to any shop uh, when you get started and then it's just a case of fine tuning the styling right so um, perhaps then it's time to just have a look at um, how this particular look was achieved so the first thing that we're going to go and do and look at is going to be the woocommerce loop and um, or before i do that let me just show you how this then integrates with um, Brizzy to display in the right place. So to do that, the other plugin that I have installed beside Code Snippets is this um, XYZ PHP Code Snippet. And what this allows you to do is to take your your code and create um, a short code of that code in able to insert in the page. So um, all I do there is I put in the function name the plugin here generates the short code. I put that in the website and it works. Now you could put the entire function in this space here. You don't have to use two, but I just find that managing the um, snippets is easier in this code snippets plugin. Uh, just easier to manage and see, and it's a much less cluttered um, interface. So what I'm going to do is turn these off. So let's turn all those off. So if I then deactivate and apply, and then I go to the website, there may be an error because we're not, yeah, and that's because we're not displaying the um, mini cart. So if I just reactivate the mini cart and go back, then that'll show. And the reason for that is because we have the short code in XYZ PHP short code that references the mini cart. So in Brizzy then, to show you how that works, this mini cart is, act uh, is actually a short code which displays in the accordion. So this element here is a WordPress short code. And for the layout, we also then have this WordPress short code. So the nice thing is, is that you can use this on more than one um, website. It's not hard coded into the site. So if you have several Brizzy installations and you're setting up a shop, then by running a series of hooks, you can then insert the code into the page quite easily. Right, so to get started, um, for those of you who want to see how this all fits together, the first thing that we need to look at is the WooCommerce loop. So what I'm going to do is head over to my short codes here, and I'm going to, uh, I haven't tried this function here, so activate or 
Right, so those should work. So we should be able to now um, remove those snippets and the page should still work. So let me deactivate those two and refresh. Right, so everything is still okay, but obviously there's nothing to see. Right, now what we're going to do is get this um, all working together. Right. First thing we're going to look at then is the WooCommerce loop. 